Okay, we are solving question number four from lecture number three. It is given that S n is equal to P n square is equal to this. We know S n is equal to P m square is equal to this. We already know. We simplify a bit and subtract, then we get P is equal to n minus m is equal to d by two into n minus m. N and m are not same, therefore we can cancel them. We get D is equal to two P. If we substitute D is equal to two P in any one of the two equations, we will get A is equal to P. And therefore, S P you can find out which will happen to be P Q. Question problem number four, lecture number three. Next, lecture number three, problem number five. Problem number five. Now. you must have solved it using algebra now let me show you how to solve it using geometry sp this is your p p -th. this is term number p okay without loss of generality i am assuming p is smaller than q i go some distance away and i end up getting q term number and then this is this is your first term this is second this is pth term this is p plus 1th term p plus second term this is qth term this is going to be q uh, this is going to be p plus q Plus one eighth term, dot dot. No, bro, tell me. Sir, Q plus one. This is going to be Q plus one eighth term, dot dot dot. This distance from here to here, and this distance from here to here must be same, because they are p number of terms. When Q is added by p, they are again p number of terms here. And therefore, this is your Q plus P term number. Okay, this is very important. So, the in arithmetic progression, all the terms are sitting at equal distances, and therefore, this distance is going to be same as this. Very important. Now, it is given that sum of first P terms, that means from here to here, is Q. That is summation. Add all of them. From here to here, it is p. So therefore, can you tell me the summation of terms from p plus one to q from here to here? P minus q. P minus q. Yes, q. This is summation of. Terms between this distance. Yes or no? Yes. Very good. How many terms are there there? How many terms are there here? Q minus p. Term number q. And what you have to subtract this term number p. So how many terms are there in between? Q minus p. Oh, very good. Now, because this is arithmetic progression, summation of these many these many terms from one to p, when added to Q plus one to this, divided by number of terms p is going to be average. We have recognized that first term and the last term. Their average is going to be middle term, this one, second term, and second last term. Their average is going to be middle term. So if we forget these many terms and these many terms, the average of these remaining terms will be the same old average, right? And we can always find out the average. How much is the average? Total is. P minus Q. That is total divided by total number of terms. Q minus P. 
is our average which is middle term average is some other meaning but it is same as middle term in arithmetic progression so average is middle term which is equal to minus so our middle term in this arithmetic progression whatever is this middle term is minus 1 it is sitting there and controlling the entire arithmetic progression now you are asked what is the summation of p plus q terms p plus q terms summation is equal to average is equal to average into number of terms which is equal to minus 1 into p plus q therefore what mr patel kar is saying minus of p plus q is the answer okay so how do we get term uh, p minus q upon q like how is the total number of uh, terms p minus q sir can i keep my videos a1 a2 a3 n this is problem number 7 nahi see from lecture number 3 a1 a2 a3 dot 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 an these are the first n numbers of arithmetic progression followed by n more numbers in the same arithmetic progression but denoted by b1 b2 b3 bn followed by some more n numbers denoted by c so from year to year it is a complete same arithmetic progression okay and therefore we realize that can i ask you this question is a1 b1 c1 an arithmetic progression no sir are no yes sir we yes, can sir. yes sir it is an ap baga garva sangtoy he jara kay tari garva gadna purohit patkan uttar dayacha a1 b1 c1 is an ap why the common difference is same between b1 and a1 yes whatever is common difference exactly same common difference between c1 and so if three terms are in ap we already know that a1 plus c1 is equal to 2 times b1 yes or no yes sir this is correct if they are in arithmetic progression very good so let us write down a matrix matrix 1 plus c1 is equal to 2 times b very good now before that let me do the summation what is this how if i add all these terms up to this point what is the summation yes sir correct if i add all these people from here to here what is the summation s2 s2 times n okay so therefore i can calculate the summation of terms starting from b1 to bn can you tell me how much is summation of these many people डबल We realize this here. So practically, b1 plus b2 plus b3 plus bn is equal to how much? Two times sn, because s to n is equal to three sn, which is given. So three sn minus sn is two sn. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Now let us make the matrix. A1, b1, c1 are in arithmetic progression. Therefore, a1 plus c1 is equal to two b1. Now, if we add one more fellow to them. then will this become 3 yes of course yes will a2 b2 and c2 be an arithmetic progression yes yes sir will they add up yes, to 2 yes 
will a n b n and c n be in arithmetic progression yes will they add up to n yes okay add all these n, n equations lhs is everything that is s 3 n which is equal to rhs rhs 3 times 2 times ten yes or no there yes sir S three n upon S n is equal to three into two six. I think this is very elegant without getting into any formula of nth term nor summation of n terms. We are not using any formula. That is why I find this is geometric approach. The distances distances are equal, so we are exploiting the equalness of those distances to calculate the answers let us start geometric progression a sequence t1 t2 t3 in which t1 is equal to a is not equal to 0 and for each n belonging to natural number pn plus 1 upon tn is equal to r which is again not equal to 0 is called geometric progression r is common ratio okay clear up let a n b a g p geometric progression let r b its common ratio let k belong to r and k not equal to 0 for each n belonging to natural number let bn is equal to an plus k and cn is equal to kan then what b n is question mark i mean first you have to find out whether b n is g p or not if g p you have to prove not then you may give counter example or you disprove then 3 second c n is g p or not if gp then give the first term and common ratio try to do it this now bn is not gp if common ratio of given an is other than 1 if common ratio of given gp which is an if it is equal to 1 that means all terms are same then bn would become also gp otherwise bn is not gp and cn is definitely gp because k is getting multiplied so if you take cn plus 1 upon cn 
it will be same as cn upon cn minus 1 which is going to be small r which you can very easily prove therefore second statement in this theorem is correct true and we can write the proof of that also okay now we learn by solving problems problem number 1 product of three consecutive terms equal to 32 and their sum is 211 upon 18 find common ratio correction product of three consecutive terms in gp is 32 and their sum is 211 by 18 find the common ratio correction one more correction product of three consecutive terms in gp is equal to 216 and their sum is 21 find the terms and problem number 2 is product of five consecutive terms in gp is equal to 32 and their sum is 211 upon 18 i mixed up find common ratio something else come to comes to your mind and you make mistake 